Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is Monday, May 14th, and you are tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM as today they welcome in the Dover Sherborne Blue Raiders. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Matt Clark is our cameraman. Hopkinton at 9 and 4 on the season. Dover Sherborne with a record of 4 and 10. The Blue Raiders are led by head coach Stephen Ryan. The Hopkinton Hillers led by head coach Steve Simos. It is an absolutely gorgeous day here for baseball. It's also senior night for the Hopkinton Hillers. Believe it or not, we are already coming towards the end of the regular season, but still a few more games left to be played. Today's weather, 72 degrees out, clear, sunny skies. Can't ask for better weather, Larry. Absolutely, and the Doppler radar says no showers in the area. So we should be ready to go in a few minutes. We certainly should, and why don't we take a look at the Dover Sherborne lineup. Leading things off will be number three, the pitcher, Holden Ferrari. Batting second will be number 34, the shortstop, John Musgrave. Batting third will be the second baseman, number five, Jake Skara. Hitting cleanup will be the catcher, number 14, Cole Condon. The third baseman, Pat Wright, wears number four and will bat fifth. Trevor Bowman is the DH batting six, wearing number 20. Chase Almy, the right fielder, batting seventh, wearing number eight. Graham Campbell, the center fielder, batting eighth, wearing number nine. Nick Markin, the left fielder, batting ninth, wearing number 11. And Alex Waugh, the first baseman, wearing number 18, the odd man out of the lineup. Larry, how about the Hopkinton Hillers defense today? Defense begins with senior Matt Lindquist at third base, senior Timmy. Burdick at shortstop, Jack Whaley at second base, senior captain, Zach Sasitsky at first base, left to right, senior Connor Hebert in left. 12, Ben McKenzie in center field, number nine, Anthony Farina, a senior. We have Drew Brancatori behind the plate and Brendan Kelly towing the rubber today for the Hillers. And there you have it, the Hopkinton Hillers certainly uh, loaded with seniors and loaded with reasons to celebrate here today on Senior Day. Let's take a look at our pitcher this afternoon, Brandon Kelly, who is also going to be hitting in the lineup. But pitching wise, he has a 126 ERA, one win, one loss in six appearances. So he has pitched pretty well. He's pitched 16 and two thirds of an inning, giving up eight hits, 13 runs, three of which were earned. 10 walks, 17 strikeouts. So this uh, appears to be maybe the, really the first start for Brandon Kelly in quite a while for the Hillers. Yes, he pitched an inning down in Connecticut and he pitched down at Medway where we weren't broadcasting, pitched very well four or five innings there. He features a really nice fastball slider and throw in a change up. So he should be fun to watch today, see if he's on the mark right out of the chute. And as for Holden Ferrari, the pitcher for Dover Sherborne, he is a 355 ERA, two wins, four losses, six appearances, six games started. So he has pitched pretty well for the Blue Raiders, and they will certainly be relying heavily on him today to try to take down a very good Hillers lineup that overall as a team is hitting a 291 on the season. That's certainly an impressive number, Larry. 291 isn't bad. I think the Hillers are just a little bit ahead in their batting average. Stepping in to start things off is the pitcher, Holden Ferrari for Dover Sherborne. And we are ready for baseball here at Field 2 at Hopkinton High School. Holden Ferrari at a 341 mark on the season, 15 for 44, 7 RBIs, and 15 runs scored. Is that first pitch is outside, 1-0. Some of the outfielders may have a little trouble with the high sky today, the lack of, today, the lack of uh, clouds. Fastball for a strike, one and one. A lot of these kids were at their junior prom. Brendan Kelly took off a little facial hair, see if that doesn't affect his pitching at all. That pitch down low, two and one.
Kelly set to deal. Swinging strike, two and two. Nice breaking pitch by Brendan. Counts even. Big week for Hillers baseball. They got Ashland on the road Wednesday. We'll be partnering up with our friends over at WACA TV for that game. That pitch outside, full count. Drew Rankatori behind the plate for the Hillers. Has certainly got a lot of work from the catcher's position with Steve Simos dealing with some injuries. We'll see if we can get an update on his injury situation. Swinging strike for out number one. We'll bring up John Musgrave, the shortstop. Brendan's got to be pretty happy with that set of pitches he threw. John Musgrave, a senior, 326 on the season. 11 runs scored, six driven in, takes strike one. Kelly's just pouring on the gas here. Feels very comfortable with this fastball so far. There's strike two, nice fastball there. Now he can do anything he wants. He's got the, sit the hitter set up, so see what he throws. The 0-2, there it is, out number two, strikeout number two. Couldn't tell whether that was a changeup or a breaking pitch, but either way, the hitter was way out in front of it. We'll bring up Jake Scurra, the second baseman. He is a senior as well for Dover Sherborne, hitting a 286 on the season, 14 for 49. Eight runs scored, nine driven in, two doubles. He's the three hitter. Coach Simos just told Ben McKenzie to back up a few steps. 0 oh and 1. So Coach Simos must know something. Leg lift and the pitch. Breaking pitch in there for strike two. That was a beauty. Brendan's being very economical today with his pitches. He should go deep. There it is. Strikes out the side to start off this game, and we will head to the bottom of the first. We are scoreless here between the Dover Sherborne Blue Raiders and Hopkinton Hillers on HCAM. Bottom of the first inning. Let's take a look at the Hopkinton Hillers lineup. Starting things off is going to be number 12, the center fielder, Ben McKenzie. Number 13, Steve Simos, the DH today, batting second. Batting third is Zach Sasitsky, wearing number 22. He's the first baseman. Anthony Farina wears number 10, plays right field, and will bat cleanup. Matt Lindquist wears number 9, plays third base, and will bat fifth. Brendan Kelly, the pitcher, wearing number 7, batting sixth. Jack Whaley, the second baseman, wearing number 1, batting seventh. Connor Hebert, the left fielder, wearing number 5, batting eighth. And Tim Burdick, the shortstop, wearing number 3, batting ninth. Larry, how about that Dover Sherborne defense? Let's go around the infield with Patrick Wright at third. John Musgrave at short, Jake Scarrat at second, Alex Waugh at first base, left to right, Nick Markin, Graham Campbell in center, and Chase Almy in right field. Behind the plate today is Cole Condon, catching for Holden Ferrara. Ben McKenzie will lead things off for the Hillers, and he has just had a fantastic season at the plate. A 425 batting average, 17 for 40, 15 runs scored, 15 driven in, five doubles, two homers. And I mentioned to Ben before the game, there's no white car out in dead center field so that he can aim for it. So he's going to have to pick something else. That car usually pulls up at, after the softball game's over, so I wonder if it's some softball fans that come up in, in the later innings of this game. We'll have to keep an eye out. There's a good crowd out there in that Jeep. You got a lot of um, former Hillers returning for spring break. Oh, and one on McKenzie. Or actually, now it's uh, summer break for the college kids. Saw one of the captains, Brian Gone from last year, was out in Steubenville, Ohio for his first year. Had a shoulder injury playing soccer, and once again went under the knife for the third time in three years. Holden Ferrari set the deal. That can't be easy. 
No. I told him he didn't drink enough milk when he was younger, but he claims <laughs> he drank loads of milk. They just had some bad luck. The 2-1. Down low. Well, this is a deadly top of the lineup for the Hillers. Ben McKenzie, Steve Simos, and Zach Sasitsky. Doesn't get much better than that. I wouldn't be a bit surprised towards the tail end of the year. Some college people are not looking at Ben. There's a strike, full count. Misses his uh, arm in center field and the way he can go get the ball, fly balls, but he can still hit for power, hit for average, and run those bases. Ferrari deals. Ball four. McKenzie draws the walk. It'll bring up Steve Simos, the DH. You got to be a pretty special player to come up as a sophomore and star like he did last year, like this young fella, Stevie Simos. He's at a 333 on the season, 10 for 30. Of course, he's been dealing with some injuries. Oh. And that hits him. We could go back with all the games we've televised, and he's got hit in every single game. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I just don't think he gets out of the way, or he's got some vision issues, or I don't know what it is. He's a ball magnet. That'll bring up Zach Sasitsky. Well, we know he's not afraid to take a hit. That's no, for sure. he is not. Zach, a captain, along with Tommy Leone, will be going to Georgetown University, become a Hoya. Sasitsky hitting a 312 on the season, 10 for 32. Swinging strike. Nice pitch there by Ferrari. Do you have any idea what a Hoya is? Georgetown. No, but a, what a Hoya is. Oh, uh, a dog? <laughs> <laughs> I tricked you last time with what a jumbo was for Tufts. Takes a look at second and deals down low. Two runners on, no outs for the Hillers here in the bottom of the first. Anthony Farina due up next. Zach, one of the heroes in those three games where they walked off him right in a row. And he bunts here up the middle, picked up by Ferrari, throw to third, and they're able to get the lead runner. Ooh. One away. Well, Sasitsky was hoping to push the runners up, but a nice play there by Ferrari. Sort of goes contrary to what Steve Simo said at the middle of the, or at the beginning of the year, he wasn't going to play small ball like that. He's going to let the hitters hit away and go base by base. But he's the coach. Yep. Cleanup man is now up. Anthony Farina. I think Coach Simo saw the third baseman playing way back. So 324 average for Farina. Takes a strike there. Anthony likes to pull his hands in, so anything middle in, he'll let it rip. He's driven in five, or driven in seven, scored five. That pitch up high, two and one. Two on, one out. Ferrari set the deal. There's a strike. Ferrari's got some decent speed on his fastball. He's keeping the ball low. Ferrari working from the stretch, the 2 2. Swinging strike, and Farina goes down. Two away. We'll bring up Matt Lindquist, the third baseman. The future Nittany Lion. Matt Lindquist at a 400 this season, 6'4", 15. Takes that one inside, 1-0. One oh. He's carrying on in the family tradition. His older brother is here in attendance. Graduate of Penn State University. Runner leading off of second. There's a strike, one and one. By Pe Matt playing third base today in place of Ryan Kester. One, one. There's strike two.
Matt's a three sports star at football, hockey, here in the diamond. Both runners taking off, and both runners will be granted the advance. Two and two count now on Lindquist. There was no attempt whatsoever to get those guys. Middle infielders didn't move at all. We'll give them stolen bases. That's what I'm giving them. That pitch way up high, but Cole Condon able to pull it down. Good reaction there by the catcher. That would have definitely cost a run if that one got by. Well, we've got the brick wall here, so we saw last, last game a ball ricochet right back to the catcher. So it's not a guarantee, but gets in the netting, it is a base. And there's strike three, got Lindquist looking, and despite letting a pair on, Dover Sherborne will get out of it unscathed, and we will head to the top of the second. We have a scoreless game between the Hillers and Dover Sherborne on HCAM. Top of the second inning, four, five, and six, two up for Dover Sherborne. Cole Condon, Pat Wright, and Trevor Bowman to step up to the plate to face Brandon Kelly, who had a one, two, three, top of the first, struck out the side. And he was certainly dealing to start off this game. Cole Condon, the catcher, stepping in now. Had a run-saving defensive play behind the plate to pull down a wild pitch. Gets a piece of this one, ripped in the right field, and that'll drop in for a leadoff single for Condon. Cole Condon was at a 341 heading into this game. Now that average is going to be bumped up a little bit. Now 16 for 45 on the season. With nine runs driven in, nine scored. And that'll bring up Pat Wright, the cleanup, or excuse me, the fifth hitter in the lineup. He's a junior hitting a 314, 11 for 35, six driven in, seven scored. Gets a piece of this one in the left field, it goes. Back to back hits to start off the inning for Dover Sherborne. The pitch was a little up in the strike zone. And for those who are hanging on my every word wanting to know what a Hoyer is, it's a sprawling evergreen shrub. Ah. And how that fits into being a, uh, a name for a big university, I don't know. No idea. Trevor Bowman, the DH, stepping in. He is at a 333 on the season. Three scored, four driven in. That pitch is strike there for a strike. Oh, and one. Well, Lindquist was charging on that play. There was no rotation. Timmy Burdick is watching second base. Brennan Kelly working from the stretch with two on and no outs. Fouled away, 0-2. Nice breaking pitch by Brendan. So Brendan looks like he's going to get any ball to the left-hand side of the infield should they try and bunt, but with two strikes, be highly unlikely here. Kelly ready to deal. Nasty breaking pitch for out number one. Ooh, ah. That'll bring up Chase Almy, the right fielder. Brendan Kelly now with four strikeouts in this game. Except for those two pitches he left up, he's been cruising right along. He's got a big strike zone to work with here, with Almy. Working from the stretch. Nasty breaking pitch for strike one. I think uh, Coach Simos likes to call those back-to-back -back breaking pitches. Maybe he'll call three in a row. That had a nasty drop on it. Kelly takes a look at second and deals. And this is going to take a couple hops on the infield grass. Picked up at short, throw to first for one. The throw over to Sitsitsky is not in time. Throw to second for one, excuse me. So they get the six to four force out. Little bobble by Timmy, got the ball to Whaley. Whaley faked the throw to first in hopes that runner would turn the bag at third and throw to third, but there's no play there. Two outs in the inning, Cole Condon pushes up to third. It's Chase Almy at first. And now Graham Campbell, the left fielder to the plate. Graham Campbell at a 214 on the season, six for 28 overall. That one down low. Good. Defensive play there by Rankatori.
No advance by Condon over at first base. Or Almy, excuse me. Checking at first, nearly got him. A little sneaky move by Brendan. The 1-0. And this is hit high in the air in foul territory on the left side and no one able to get to it. One and one. We're blocked out by this particular dugout in the third base side, but I think it was out of play anyway. I just wait and see if people start walking off the field. <laughs> That's a good indication usually that <laughs> there's an out recorded. Good crowd here today, Tom. Very good crowd. Perfect day to take in some baseball on this Monday afternoon. The 1-1, one, one. swinging strike, one and two. Brendan's got a lot of confidence in that off-speed stuff. Has these hitters way out in front. From the stretch. There it is, strike three. It's Campbell swinging with a nice breaking pitch. Five strikeouts in the first two innings for Brendan Kelly. We will head to the bottom of the second. We are scoreless here at Hopkinton High School on HCAM. Bottom of the second inning, a nice crowd on hand here today to take in some Hopkinton Hillers baseball as Brendan Kelly, the pitcher, will step up to the plate. Six, seven, and eight do up for the Hillers. Base Holden Ferrari. Kelly pitching a nice game so far. He'll try to help out his own cause here. And he takes strike one. He's a threat to go deep. I think he's gone deep a couple times this year and they haven't been cheap. 300 batting average for Brandon Kelly. He has one homer, one triple, five RBIs, five runs scored. And he follows that one away, 0-2. He's made the most of his at bats. Sasitsky's been taking most of the at bats, been playing first base. Brandon Kelly, Jack Whaley, and Connor Hebert do up this inning. And that one hit him. Second hit batter today. Can't hurt steel there, Tom. That's true. Bring up Jack Whaley, who has had a few good games at the plate lately. He's hitting a 233 overall. Nine runs scored, three driven in. Double to his credit. Kelly leading off of first. That pitch up high, 1-0. Yeah, holding Ferrari a little bit wild at times. Yeah, he hasn't found a, a groove yet. Kelly is really quick first to third once he gets his motor going. Ferrari deals, that one just outside, 2-0. Oh. Unfortunately, Jack Whaley will be heading down south at the end of this year. Way, way south, we don't have a chance to see him next year. That one upstairs, 3-0. Oh. There's a nice golfing weather day year round. Certainly is. Checking at first, runner back safe, close call. Well, if that's his best move, it's not uh, too intimidating. That one inside, Whaley draws the four pitch walk. Two on, no outs. Connor Hebert coming up to the plate. The last time they had a runner on first and second, Sosiski bunted down the third base line. Connor's known to be a pretty good bunter, blessed with some speed, so see what Coach Simos does here. He's got a 333 on the season. He's gonna bunt here, good call, Larry. That one's fouled away. Always good calls, Tom, always good calls. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's why we pay the big bucks. Right, right. He could have brought me a sandwich today, but. Oh. <laughs> now you're just asking for too much. Right, exactly. I don't think he'll go back to back with the bunt. 
Ferrari going to step off the mound. With a big lead being taken by Brendan Kelly. A little warning there. Second baseman playing Connor to hit the ball to the right side, seeing as how far he's away. That one's going to get by Cole Condon. And that's going to allow both runners to advance. No throw down. So now you got Kelly at third, Whaley at second on the wild pitch. See that ricochet, Tom, right off the brick wall? Yep. Just like Globe Life Park down in Arlington, Texas. But he had a play there, I think, Condon. Line up and the pitch. That one down low as well, but this time Condon able to get the glove on it, two and one. I think Condon was surprised to see that ball come right back at him. Giving that a wild pitch or a pass ball, Larry? Oh, that's a wild pitch. Yeah. There's no chance for Condon. Fouled away off of Condon there. Two and two. Ferrari took a little bit off that pitch. Dover in on the corners. Ebert has scored seven runs, driven in one this season. Gets a piece of this one right up the middle, past the dive of the second baseman, one in to score. Here comes another run for the Hillers as Whaley comes around. It's a two RBI hit for Connor Hebert, and now a two nothing lead for the Hillers. Connor Hebert safely aboard over at first base, and the Hillers on the scoreboard. He's making the most of his chances this year when inserted in the lineup. And of course, he's a threat to steal. We know that. Certainly is. As Tim Burdick steps in. Well, that was a good attempt by Skura, but fell just short with the dive. That pitch way up high. That'll get by Condon. And Connor Hebert able to advance on the wild pitch. That ball got caught in the netting. I think the umpire called it a dead ball because it didn't bounce right off. Timmy smiling there. He couldn't have got that with a 10-foot ladder. Tim Burdick, one for 15 at the plate. Takes a ball there, 2-0. and Known for his defense. Gold glove caliber defense. Certainly is very good in the infield. That one down low. Doesn't seem to be any movement in the Dover Sherbron bullpen. So they're going to ride with Ferrari for a while. Well, he's been uh, their long term guy for, for almost the season, but certainly struggling here today. There's a strike, three and one. That was a take all the way for Timmy. Still no outs for the Hillers. Three one pitch, fouled away, full count. Top of the order, due up next. It's been McKenzie chasing down the foul ball. Ferrari deals upstairs, and that'll draw the walk for Burdick. First and second, and now McKenzie coming to the plate, but not before a conversation with Coach Simos. We do have standing room only here at the Thomas A. McIntyre Pavilion behind home plate, which had a dedication ceremony this weekend. Very move, moving ceremony. Left field bleachers look like they're filling in. Yeah, very nice turnout here today. That one outside, 1-0. Oh. Two in this inning for the Hillers. Two on, no outs. And now we're going to get a visit to the mound from Coach Ryan. Talk things over with his pitcher. There is now warm-up action for Dover Sherborne. It looks like Matt McGrath is getting loose, a junior. It's okay, it's okay. I think Coach Simos is telling the fellas, anything in the dirt, go. 
Yeah, we've seen quite a few wild pitches this inning from Ferrari. But Timmy has to be very careful that Connor actually does go and not put the brakes on and him get caught in no man's land. Danger at the plate now as Ben McKenzie steps in and Ben McKenzie a little overdue for a hit. <laughs> Was he slugging over 600? Something like that. I'll get you the uh, exact number in a moment, but I don't believe he had a hit in that midfield game. Oh my goodness. Which is a very rare occurrence. <laughs> yeah. Last couple of years watching this fella play. It's a privilege. Checking at first, and the throw got away, and the runner from second will advance. So Hebert able to advance to third on the errant throw over to first. One base on the overthrow yep. from the infield, yep. so. It's going to give Burdick the advancement, too. Yeah, Ben McKenzie was 0 for 4 against Medfield with a walk. Well, the uh, Dover Sherman coach is arguing that that ball is in play. And therefore, Timmy should not get second base. So will they send him back, or will they? Uh, I'm not. Where did the ball land? Was just it? to the uh, went off right the, of the dugout. If it went off the fence. That's out of play. Ben McKenzie had a 4.25 heading into this game at the plate, which is certainly very impressive. And it looks like the runner is going to stay at second. Have to be an error on the pitcher. Yep. 5'11 on base percentage for McKenzie. 700 slugging. Ooh. Those are some lofty, lofty numbers. Certainly are. And if he could only. Uh, He's already got the on base percentage up this game with the walk in the first inning. Now the coach continuing to argue with the umpire about if that was out of play or not. Well, the ground rules were spoken about before the game started, so both coaches agreed. Um. So Ben has a torn labrum, which he'll go under some surgery after the season is over, so he'll be ready for basketball season next year. It's too bad we haven't seen him patrol center field on an everyday basis this year. But there is next year. Long way to go this season as well if the Hillers keep playing like this, as that one's sliced foul. Two and one. He really wanted that. There's a track meet going on over there, it appears. Hillers. Very, very amateur trap me track meet. No bullhorns or anything. Dover Sherburn infield all the way in, going to cut the run off the plate. That one down low. Three and one. Well, no outs, first base open. You just give McKenzie the walk here. I don't know, but that center fielder is playing awful shallow. Gets a piece of this one, crushed over to left center. Off the fence it goes. Here comes one run and another. A two RBI stand up double for Ben McKenzie, who absolutely tattooed that ball. Where'd the ball go? That went right off the fence. Out in the center field, yes. Out in the center field near that H out there. He just crushed it. Well, he likes that spot. He really likes that spot. That was very close to being out of here. Well, the center fielder took one look at that ball, made one step, and knew he was in trouble. Second two RBI hit of the inning for the Hillers. It's 4 0 as Steve Simo steps in. And he just got hit again. Oh, my one word. One pitch, one hit. I don't know what they serve at the Simos family for dinner, but. <laughs> <laughs> you even hear people in the crowd reacting. It's no surprise. It's like, <laughs> what up with that? I believe it was only one pitch last time, too, if I'm not mistaken. And he's a tremendous hitter, so you'd think he'd do everything short of a dance to get out of the way. <laughs> That's going to be all for Ferrari. Yeah, they might pull him here. Due up next is Zach Sitsky. 
Yep, they're gonna take the ball and that'll be the day for Ferrari. Four runs in for the Hillers. No outs in this inning still. And the relief pitcher for Dover Sherborne is gonna be Matt McGrath. We'll come back with more details on him in just a bit. Four nothing Hillers on H Camp. Continuing on in the bottom of the second, four runs in for the Hillers, a new pitcher for Dover Sherborne. Matt McGrath steps in, still no outs for Hopkinton. And they got Simos over at first and McKenzie at second. McKenzie with a huge hit to center field, went off the fence to drive in Hebert and Burdick as Sasitsky takes ball one. The new pitcher's Matt McGrath. He's worked four and two thirds giving up one run which was unearned as both runners take off the throw over to third's gonna get into left field and now coming around to score is Ben McKenzie a five nothing lead for the Hillers. McKenzie showing off that speed. He knew where the ball was at all times. He turned his head. Once it got in the outfield he knew he could just saunter home. Steve Simos over at second. Second error of the inning for Dover Sherborne. Right up and the pitch, upstairs. Three and oh to Sisitsky. Kind of bittersweet for me today uh, since it's seniors day. Some of these kids I've seen play over 200 games in their career. And a big lead for Simos to throw over. It gets away briefly from the second baseman, but if the second baseman held on to that, he might've been out. Some of these kids I, I remember from kindergarten Steve Simos leading the team with hit by a pitch. He's been hit seven times this year. <laughs> that includes the two to today <laughs> as Sasitsky draws the walk. Yeah, a lot of great uh, senior talent on this team as well. Hopefully uh, we're in store for a nice big playoff run as Anthony Farina will step in. Amen to that. Anthony has yet to turn one around this year, but today may be the day. Gets a piece of this one, hit high in the air, over to left field, battling the sun and making the catch is Nick Markin. And they got Simos, it looks like, off the bag at second. They were able to get the throw over to second before Simos could get back, so it turns into a double play. Coach Simos uh, might have a word for his young son. That's, uh, that's more than a word. <laughs> That's two outs, Sasitsky still at first. Matt Lindquist to the plate, Hillers have batted around. That one upstairs. Matt Lindquist has got warning track power. Maybe he'll put that on display today. Brendan Kelly on deck. Zach Sasitsky getting a very small lead at first. Gets a piece of this one. There's your warning track power, but right under it to make the catch is Graham Campbell. And that will wrap up the bottom of the second, but not before the Hillers plate five runs. It's a five nothing lead as we head to the top of the third on H cam. Top of the third inning, due up for Dover Sherborne, nine one and two. Nick Mark in the left fielder, holding Ferrari the pitcher and John Musgrave the shortstop. A five nothing lead for the Hillers. Brennan Kelly out there for another inning of work. He has five strikeouts to his credit so far this afternoon. He was in the dugout for a long time during that last inning. Hopefully he didn't cool off. That pitch up high. Well, the velocity doesn't seem like it has. Yeah, he's topped out uh, over the winter at 88 miles an hour. Probably sits at 84, 85 miles an hour right now. And this one is hit in the air by Markin over to left field, and it's dropped in left field by Hebert. Looks like maybe the sun got in the way a little bit, and Markin is aboard on the error. Brendan supplied that power. And that'll bring up Holden Ferrari. Or actually, it is going to still bring up Holden Ferrari. He stays in the game to hit. The sun is high. Runner leading off of first. That one in there for a strike. Taking a look at the TVL baseball standings, Ashland up top with a 
a record of 13 and three. Hillers and Hollison are both nine and four, checking at first, runner back just saved. Medway is nine and five, Medfield six and seven, Bellingham six and four. Dover Sherborne four and 10, Westwood one and nine, Millis six and seven, Dedham also towards the top at 12 and three. Swinging strike there. Brendan can chuckle on that one. He had the hitter Ferrari just uh, all messed up. He's taking a big lead over at first base. The 0-2. Nasty breaking pitch for strike number three. One away. Sixth strikeout of the day for Brendan Kelly. That pitch is really working for him today. It certainly is. Hasn't spiked many. John Musgrave steps in. Up the third base side, slow roller picked up by the third baseman. The throw to first, pulls Sasitsky off the bag. Everyone's safe. I have to give him a dribbling base hit on that. Would have taken an excellent play by Matt Lindquist to throw this runner out. Yeah, that's a tough one to play. Two on, one out. Jake Scurra, the second baseman, to step in. Scurra struck out his last time out in the first. Checking at second, runner back safe. Well, Brendan showed his inside move there, which was pretty good. They had the play on whether that was called by Drew Brancatori or called from the bench. Brendan Kelly working from the stretch. And is gonna get a piece of this one, drops in safely to left field. Here comes a run for Dover Sherborne. The throw in is not in time and it's a five to one game. An RBI single for Skura. Musgrave moves up to second. Another run on run. I'll bring up Cole Condon. Brendan's father keeps very, very close tabs on his stats. It doesn't affect his ERA. Runners on first and second, one out, one in for Dover Sherborne. And this one's down the third base side, and that is going to be gloved that short, throw to second, and it appears everyone Oh, nope, they got the out at second, so that's two away. They work that. They work on that play pregame, that ball that's thrown from short to second, fake throw to first, and throw to third. It's the way they thought about it. Condon reaches on the six to four fielder's choice. I'll bring up Pat Wright, the third baseman. Now Coach Simos. Uh, that's something to say to the umpires. I think he's arguing for some kind of interference here. Whether the runner didn't slide or just stood up? I think he is arguing that the runner interfered with the throw to first. I don't know if he's they're gonna grant this to him, but doesn't appear they will. Remains two outs. Pretty rare, rare when a uh, umpire gets overruled. They don't want to look bad, except if it's blatant. So, Simos has sent the signals in the Rankatori as to whether they're going to throw through or not. Brendan may hold this runner close, although he doesn't have a big lead. Kelly deals to right, swinging strike there. Getting a little bit wider of a lead over there. From the stretch, he deals, and Wright gets a piece of this one. That's going to drop into center field. Here comes another DS run. It's 5-2, to two, an RBI single for Wright. Coming around to score was John Musgrave. Cole Condon moves up to second. Now bring up Trevor Bowman, the DH. You saw the effects of... Uh, 
that Torn Labrum on Ben McKenzie sort of had to flick that ball in. He has been required to unleash his cannon yet, yet this year, so there's usually an infielder out there trying to get the cut. That one up high, 1-0. Well, Dover Sherborne making some good contact this inning. Kelly deals, swinging strike, nice fastball. The mismatch there. What did Bowman do the last time up against Brendan? Bowman struck out his last time up in the second inning as he follows that one away, one and two. He's heading in that general direction again. No jinxing here, but. Five to two lead for the Hillers here in the top of the third. Both runners taking a nice lead as Kelly deals and this is hit foul up the left side. Count remains one and two. Misses Kelly on that ball. The one, two. That one inside, two and two. Zach Zasitsky playing behind the runner. That one fouled off, two and two. Kelly working from the stretch, both runners leading. The 2-2 pitch, and Bowman gets a piece of this one. That is foul up the left side. Near the batting cage. Good distance on that one. A lot of Hillers scampering out of the dugout to get on that ball. And a fan. Kelly once again from the stretch. And this is fouled off. Good battle going on here between Trevor Bowman and Brendan Kelly. I don't mean to change the subject, but are you watching the Royal Wedding this Saturday? I don't intend to, no. <laughs> okay, back to the ball game. I'll be watching, uh, hopefully the, I think the Celtics play Saturday. As this is hit in the air, up the right side, could be trouble, but it's foul. That was just foul. Whatever wind there was here, it was blowing out that way. Always, always the ball off a right-hander's bat is gonna tail to the right. Good piece, though. Have they solved the Brendan Kelly mystery here? They might have. He certainly had a throw a lot of pitches in this inning. And that's fouled off. The battle between Bowman and Kelly continues. There is some warm up activity in the Hello bullpen. I'll take a peek in between innings. Kelly deals, check swing, and he's able to hold, full count. Delayed steal by Dova Sherburn. That was just not a pay attention play. That allows Cole Condon to go to third. Runners on the corners now. The full count pitch. Ball four, bases loaded. Off break there for Kelly. I'll bring up Chase Almy, the right fielder, who grounded out his last time up. Well, reached on a six to four force out, excuse me. If 
Five to two lead for the Hillers. But the leading run at the plate for Dover Sherborne. There is two outs in the inning, however. Kelly deals. Gets a piece of this one up the middle. It goes, and it's bobbled by the shortstop. The throw to first it is not going to be in time. A run is in for Dover Sherborne. I'm giving that one an error on Burdick. That looked like a pretty routine play. But he was unable to get a hold of it. And Cole Condon around to score. It's 5-3. to three. Dover Sherborne has batted around. And now Graham Campbell, the center fielder, is set to come up to the plate. Coach Simos with a few words for Kelly. Got a Campbell struck out his hitter. last time up. I think. Nope, still Graham Campbell. No, it's Campbell. He's going to get pinch hit for No. Appears he will stay in. Brendan had a long half inning prior to this. He's working real hard. His double barrel action in the bullpen. There's a strike. I wonder if this will be the last inning of work for Brendan Kelly out there on the mound. Well, they can't use him in the Ashland game. There are no other games this week, so. And there's strike two. Couldn't hold up there, but I think that was a strike anyway. Campbell disagreed. It only matters what the man in blue says. Or today, the man in black. Kelly from the stretch. Bases juiced for Dover Sherborne. Two outs. That one upstairs, one and two. Now that was a pitch to chase. That was right at the letters. Kelly deals. That one inside, two and two. Good job by Rankatori. Loving that one. Kelly from the stretch. Swinging strike, and that is out number three, but Dover Sherborne does play three runs. It's five to three as we head to the bottom of the third on H cam. Bottom of the third inning, a five to three lead for the Hillers. Dover Sherborne responded with three runs of their own at the top of the inning. As Brendan Kelly set to step in. He was hit by a pitch his last time up. A new pitcher for Dover Sherborne is Chase Almy in the game. He moves over from right field. Graham Campbell moves from center field to right field. And Holden Ferrari, who was the starting pitcher of the game, is now in center field for Dover Sherborne. As Kelly gets a piece of this one, that's going to drop in for a base hit. And Kelly is going to turn around first and head back to the bag. But it is a leadoff single. And that'll bring up Jack Whaley, the second baseman. Coach Simos is not going to pinch run for him and have him re-enter. I'm sure Brendan wanted to kiss that pitch goodbye, given that last inning of work. This is Chase Elmy's eighth appearance. He started one game at 2.68 ERA as the first pitch to Whaley is ball one. Almy working from the stretch. And this one's fouled away. Almy has pitched 15 and two thirds of an inning, giving up 22 hits, 12 runs, six of which were earned. Walked four, struck out eight. Jack just a little bit ahead on that pitch. The one oh. one, the check in, and that's going to get by the first baseman. A wide throw, and now Brandon Kelly heads over to second. Another uh, error by the pitcher for Dover Sherborne. Would you call that special delivery or airmail? I'd call that airmail. Wow. 
Brendan wasn't even close to the bag. Kelly with a leadoff of second. That pitch up high, two and one. Matt McGrath was the second pitcher of the game for Dover Sherborne. He went one inning, giving up no runs and a walk. During his outing, fifth run for the Hillers scored, but that was charged to Ferrari. That pitch upstairs, three and one. This game is moving along at a turtle's pace right now. Certainly is. That pitch is going to be a little bit too far inside and allow Whaley to walk down to first base. That'll bring up Connor Hebert, two on, no outs for the Hillers. Last time Connor bunted on his first pitch. Pitch up high. This game is about an hour and 10 minutes old and we're still in the bottom of the third. So it's been some uh, good offense from both sides in this one as coach for Dover Sherborne gonna come and ch talk with Almy. I think coach Simos is telling Matt Linquist let him throw a strike first. Uh, I'm sorry, Connor Heber. Let him let him, let him throw you a strike first. He would have had a two RBI single last inning. His single scored Brendan Kelly and Jack Whaley, and now he has an opportunity to do that again with Kelly over at second, Whaley at first. I wonder what the leash is for Dover Sherborne with Almy. Nobody in the bullpen. Yep. They might ride him out here as much as they can, at least. It's a 1 0 pitch. 2 0. I think the Dover Sherburn coach just said, just throw you a fastball. Don't monkey around with anything else. Line up in the pitch. There's a strike, two and one. Tim Burdick due up next for the Hillers. Alby delivers up high. Connor heading down to Maryland to be a Terrapin come fall. Excellent football player. Certainly is. Big part of that big Hillers playoff run this season. Swinging strike. Nice pitch there from Almy, full count. He wasn't thinking single on that pitch. He's a really strong, strong kid. Line up and the pitch. That one's fouled off. Count remains full. Little courtesy from the umpire. That foul tip. Checking in on the catcher. Hey, Condon has had a couple balls hit him today. When you wear the tools of ignorance, that's what you end up paying for sometimes. Only delivers. Swinging strike out number one. We'll bring up Tim Burdick with two on and one out. Burdick walked his last time up, last inning. Gets a piece of this one hit high in the air. It is in fair territory and caught by Almy. The umpire called infield fly, so. Timmy was out, nobody advanced. Here's uh, Mr. B. Well, McKenzie had a two RBI double as well last inning. That scored Connor Hebert and Tim Burdick. Crushed one off the center field fence. I have really good vibes about this AB here. That one down low, one and oh. 
Steve Simos do up next if McKenzie is able to reach. But he'll get hit by a pitch, so it doesn't really matter. Right. But Almy, Almy is not overpowering with his fastball, so we'll just see what happens here. There's a strike, one and one. Been a very, very good two strike hitter, so he'll let that one go by, wait for his pitch. The one one. That one's up high, two and one. Two one pitch from Almy. Down low. Ben looks like such a nice kid when you talk to him, but Sure, the pitchers don't appreciate it <laughs> when they're facing him. Right. He's walked and doubled in this game so far. Look at how deep the center fielder's playing him. Gets a piece of this one, and this is in foul territory, and it is not caught. Cole Condon not able to get to it in time, and that one blew around a little bit up there. Count remains full. I thought we were going to have to sacrifice you for that one, Larry. Yeah. It's all part of my duties here for H camp. Take one on the coconut if you have to. Yep. 3 2, runners should be moving. Wind up in the pitch. This one's fouled over the backstop. Count remains full. The battle continues on. Two on, two outs. Full count on McKenzie. Senior captain Tom Leone on that ball. A future jumbo next year. Senior captain. Checking at second and that one nearly got away but just pulled down by Musgrave. They're pretty aggressive with their pickoffs. Line up in the pitch. That one's fouled off. Count remains full. Ben just missing. Runners will be off on the pitch. Helm, he's set to deal. That hit him. That'll load up the bases for Mr. Get Hit by a Pitch himself, Steve Simos. Well, do you get uh, an RBI if you get hit by a pitch with the bases loaded? Absolutely. Oh, um, okay. Well, I'd like to see him hit, because he's a really good hitter, trust me. Yeah, just like <laughs> if you're up and they uh, walk you and it drives in a run, you still get the RBI. You should get a good look at Almy. Gets a piece of this one over to right field, to the fence, and that is going to be out of here. See you later. Home run. No, ground rule double, it looks like. Excuse me. It bounced over. The umpire waved home run. I thought that was out of here. That, I don't know about that. That looked like it was well over the fence. But I guess it bounced. Must have bounced just in front. It's oh, give it to him. Give it to him. Ah, I feel like that should be a homer. I don't know. <laughs> it looks like they're going to keep it at a double. I got to see that one again, Larry. Well, you, you're going to get I mean, to your you editing see? room. I thought it went over the fence, but you have the, uh, the benefit of slow motion in the editing room. Well, in any case, it's a two RBI hit. Ben McKenzie has to go back to third base. Oh, ground rule double, that's right, all right. Should be a couple so no, runs on the board. No runs will score. Weren't the bases loaded, no. 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 Oh wait, yeah, no, they weren't loaded. Well, two runs came in then. There's a strike.
Yes, they were loaded. Excuse me. Yeah, Kelly and Whaley came in to score. And McKenzie back to third. So two runs are in. That one outside. That Nine was one. a big rolling breaking pitch that didn't do much of anything. Sorry to say. Wind up here on the pitch. That one's fouled off. Right yeah, back our yeah, way. That would have been a would have been a grand slam. It would have. But at least he didn't get hit by a pitch. That is true. He has a thousand on base percentage this game, however. But I'm quite sure Coach Simos will have something to say to Stevie about an early play in the game that we'll go on mention right now. Wind up in the pitch to Sitsky. That one hit him. Nice attempt by Zach trying to get out of the way on that one. Bases are loaded up for the Hillers. Anthony Farina to step in. Big opportunity here. Farina's 0 for 2 today. When he hits a ball, he really hits a ball. And it's usually he pulls it right down the line. It's like a lion waiting for his prey right here. That one upstairs. Certainly has been a long three innings. A lot of rallies on both sides, especially the Hillers. Seven runs, five runs last inning, a couple more this inning. Gets a piece of this one, left side. Is it catchable? And it is going to be foul. One and one. Anthony's mother is just imploring him to get a hit. He's always one of the more vocal fans. He's at a 324 on the season heading into this game. He's yet to turn one around, though. That's what I want to see. Wind up in the pitch. That one down low, two and one. Well, we in the uh, sixth inning now? Wishful thinking there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the 2 1 pitch upstairs, and there's the walk. Uh, well, no, that's uh, 3 and 1. That oh. is a 3 and 1 count. I was getting confused there myself. So Farina will go back, and uh, he is going to Providence College Business School. <laughs> <laughs> Just can't keep count. Might have been trying to get away with one there. <laughs> we'll we'll uh, find out in between innings what that nickname Curly is. I've been wanting to know since he's been eight years old. 3-1 pitch. There's ball four, so a run will come around. Marina with a nice walk and an RBI as Ben McKenzie comes around to score. Simos to third, Sasitsky to second, Matt Lindquist coming up to the plate and for the second straight inning, the Hillers have batted around. For the Dover Sherburn fielders, they're getting a little tired out there with all these pitches thrown today. Alamy deals. That one is in there for ball one. An 8-3 lead now for Hopkinton. Two RBI long hit for Simos. That took a hop over the right field fence for the ground rule double as this is hit in the air over to left center and it is caught by Graham Campbell. And that will retire the side in the bottom of the third but not before the Hillers plate three more runs. It's an 8-3 lead as we head to the fourth on H cam. Top of the fourth inning, a new pitcher for the Hopkinton Hillers who have an eight to three lead. Anthony Sirocco is in the game to take over for Brendan Kelly. Kelly went three innings, giving up five hits, three runs, two of which were earned and had seven strikeouts. As Anthony Sirocco comes in to take over the pitching duties and he will work to Nick Mark in the left fielder who reached on an error his last time up. And that was last inning. He came around to score the first over Sherborne run. Anthony Sirocco, 2.55 ERA, 3-0 record. This is his seventh appearance out there on the mound. He has pitched 11 innings coming into today's action. 
Striking out 14, six walks, nine runs, four of which were earned as this is on the ground and that'll get through the left side for a base hit. A leadoff single for Markin. That'll bring up Holden Ferrari, the center fielder. He started the game as the pitcher. Now he steps in to continue into this game. Last couple innings serving as the center fielder. Well, a belated Happy Mother's Day to all the moms, or the baseball widows, we like to call them. As that one is fouled away, 0-1. Certainly hope uh, all the mothers out there enjoyed their Sunday. I'm very certain these good bunch of kids did not forget their moms yesterday. Absolutely not. Big lead taken by a Dover Sherbin runner. Lineup and the pitch from Sirocco. Nice breaking pitch, but that is going to be a ball, one and one. That's been his out pitch this year. And I don't know whether that Dover Sherbert runner is bothering him with that big lead. That one down low, two and one. Andrew had some bad luck from 13, 14, 15. Checking at first, runner back safe. With injuries, arm injuries, other kinds of injuries, and took last year off. And here he is in his senior year, the future long Hawn. Inside, three and one. He's not gonna be a doctor like his dad. He's gonna be some type of engineer. Three one pitch runner taking off from first. This ball is tattooed into left field. That'll drop in for a hit. As Markin gonna head to third. He's being waved around. The throw in is cut off, and it's an eight to four game. An RBI single for Ferrari. Well, aside from the bad stuff, that was the defense was excellently positioned. Timmy Burdick went out for the first cut, and Jack Whaley was there for the second cut but there was no play at the plate. I'll bring up John Musgrave, the shortstop. He's one for two today. Singled, scored a run last inning. Fastball up high, one and oh. Andrews a little sneaky quick with that fastball. Set to deliver. And this one is hit foul, one and one. One, one pitch, the bunt, and it is a slow roller down the first base line to throw to first is going to get away, and here comes a run for Dover Sherborne. A nicely placed bunt by Musgraves. There's all kinds of trouble. He's still going over to third on the misfire down the first base line. He's all the way now at third base. So an errant throw from behind the plate allows Ferrari to score, and Musgrave to advance all the way to third. It's an 8-5 to five game. Drew did not throw the ball to the inside of the bag. Instead threw it to the outside but the ball was creeping up the line and touching chalk. So I'm sure in his mind he was saying, is the ball gonna go fair or the ball gonna go foul? Finally picked up the ball and made his decision and threw the ball errant, which caused the runner to get third base. Jake Skura steps in. That one outside, one and zero. Oh. Tightens things up a little bit with no out and a runner on third base. Certainly does, came far from over. Gets a piece of this one. That'll drop in to left field for a hit. And here comes Musgrave for the sixth over Sherborne run. An RBI single for Skura. Still no outs in the inning for DS and Cole Condon coming to the plate. Well, this game has tightened back up. Unfortunately. Dover Sherborne getting the bats going in the last couple of innings. 
Will Andrew throw, show his pickoff move? Fastball for strike one, 0 and 1. Still no outs in the inning. Runner on first. It was a very tough play by Drew Rancatori. I hope that doesn't uh, affect his throwing ability. Good block. Very nice block there. One and one. Sometimes when you make a throwing error like that, it can affect the way you throw later on. The one one pitch fouled away. One and two. Not sure whether there's any warm up activity in the bullpen. They have Ty Doherty and Robbie Pagliuca available. Runner taking off from first, ripped down the third baseline, handled by the third baseman to throw to first. A nice one. And five to three goes Condon. Skura is able to advance to second. Matt didn't even think about throwing the ball to second base. He'd wanted the sure out there. One away, that'll bring a pat right to the third baseman. Runner on second, one out now. Three more in for Dover Sherborne. And that hit him. First and second now for DS. Trevor Bowman, the DH, to the plate. I think that's the first hit by pitch today. Yep. Hopkinton leading them three to one. <laughs> Both forces in play here. It's Rocco deals, runner taking off from second down the third baseline, gloved by the third baseman that throw to first, and they are able to get it over. But I don't know if Sasitsky got the tag on him. I think everyone's gonna be safe. He did get pulled off to the home plate side. Well, Lindquist did have a chance to maybe try to step on the third base bag against Scarra, but Scarra was already Hustling right on contact. Bowman is going to reach on the error. Second error of the inning by the Hillers. So Chase Almy will step in. Andrews really got to bear down on this hitter here. He's going to go from the full windup. That one's fouled away. Nice aggressive hack. Almy reached on a force out and an error. Four errors in the game by the Hillers. Just when you thought the Hillers were going to pull away or put it away, Dover Sherbin has scratched and clawed their way back into the game. Very much. Swinging strike, 0 and 2. There's that tight curveball I talked about. Graham Campbell, the right fielder, do up next. Sirocco deals, and he gets a piece of this, takes a hop on the infield grass, picked up at short, throw to second, and they get the out, but a run does come around to score, so sacrifice force out there for Almy. One run game now. I don't think Almy will be a threat to steal. Andrew just has to Runner. let him know he's he's there. Yeah. Runners on first and third for Dover Sherborne in eight seven game. Graham Campbell stepping in the right fielder. And we're gonna have a pinch hitter, it looks like, for Dover Sherborne. Coming in. Ryan Hart, I think I heard the umpire say. Uh -huh. Well, that's Matt McGrath stepping in now. So Matt McGrath is going to be the one to step in for Dover Sherborne with two outs. Runners on first and third. Two more, four more runs have scored for Dover Sherborne in this inning. 
Things certainly interesting all of a sudden. It's Rocco Deals as this one's hit in the air over to left field, battling the sun and making the catch is Connor Hebert. And that will retire the side on the top half of the fourth inning. To the bottom of the inning we go. The Hillers holding on and leading 8-7 to seven on each cam. Bottom of the fourth inning, stepping in for the Hillers. It's going to be Anthony Sirocco pinch hitting for Brandon Kelly. Came into the game to pitch as well. An eight to seven lead for the Hillers. Dover Sherborne right back into this game. That was a high strike, Tom. It certainly was. It's Chase Alamy out there to work another inning for Dover Sherborne. An 0 and 1 count now to Sirocco. There's strike two. Jack Whaley on deck for the Hillers, followed by Connor Hebert, six, seven, and eight in the batting order. The 0-2, that one down low. Nice to see Dylan O'Leary's mom come down for seniors, seniors day or seniors night. Dylan had a Tommy John injury and he hasn't seen any action this year, unfortunately. Very good teammate. A hell of a goalie. It's a piece of this one, foul. Count remains one and two. His number 16 is displayed out there in left center field. Line up and the pitch, upstairs. His breaking ball is it not at all tight. Big looping breaking ball. The 2-2. Two -two. Fouled off. Don't be afraid, fans. There's a net over there. Almy set to deliver. And this one is hit in the air, foul. Is it catchable? No. Even though we're in the bottom of the fourth and there's plenty more baseball to play, I sense a little tension in the crowd. Yeah, this game has all of a sudden gotten very close. Dover Sherborne rallying the past couple of innings. Putting up three in the third, four in the fourth. Yeah, looks like the softball game is over. Some of the softball players coming down. They're having a great season this year. The girls in green and orange. Wind up and the pitch. Gets a piece of this one and that is fouled off and out of play. The battle here between Anthony Sirocco and Chase Almy. Elmy deals, outside, full count. We'll get word on Wednesday as to the condition of Steve Simos, Stevie Simos, as to what they're gonna do for him medically, if anything. Now one upstairs, Sirocco draws the walk. I'll bring up Jack Whaley. Coach Simos flashing some signs down there. Asked Jack Whaley to step out of the box. Almy working from the stretch. Runner with a lead off of first. There's a strike. Whaley didn't like that one, thought that was a little high. I kind of agree. Whaley has walked twice this game and scored two runs. Almy hasn't shown much of a move except for that airmail shot the last time. That one's upstairs, one and one. And, uh, Andrew getting a nice secondary lead over there. In case 
Jack puts the ball in play. One-one pitch, the bunt, and that's a good one. Picked up by the pitcher, throw to first, and that will be in time. Sirocco does push up to second. One away, that'll bring up Connor Hebert. Almy fielding position nicely. Jack Whaley's got blessed with some speed. Tim Burdick due up next. Almy delivers, swinging strike. And runner's gonna take off from second as that got by, but I think he's gonna have to turn right back around, and he will. Late foul call by the umpire. Yep, that certainly was the right call though. He did get a piece of it with the bat. Hebert is one for two today, had a two RBI single in the second. I went upstairs, one and one. This game may be won by attrition with the heat. Who can hang in there the longest? Right. There's a strike, one and two. We are approaching an uh, hour and 40 minutes of game time. Ooh, double time. One, two pitch. Upstairs. Nice take by Connor. The 2 2. Upstairs. He's battled back. I think Andrew can get a nice big lead out there at second base. I don't think Almy possesses a good inside move based on the move he showed earlier at first base. Just a whole lot of posturing there by the shortstop. Full count pitch, upstairs, and Hebert draws the walk. Second walk of the inning surrendered by Chase Alby. That'll bring up Tim Burdick to shortstop. Two on, one out. Burdick is 0 for 1 today. He did walk and score run in the second. And Tommy eight. Ambrosino coming into the on deck circle. How'd I do? I didn't muff that, did I? You did good. He's down the third baseline foul. Little ahead of that one. It's an 8 to 7 lead for the Hillers. We're in the bottom of the fourth. It's been a wild one here this afternoon. Two on for the Hillers, one out. Well, it's interesting that they're going to pinch hit for Ben McKenzie. Well, that is an interesting call. I don't know if I like that idea. <laughs> Runner taking off from first as he gets a piece of this one over to left field. And that is going to be caught. Runners are going to have to tag up. The throw to second is not going to be in time. So Andrew went all the way around third base, had to retag third, head back to second, and had to dive back in. Just safe. Yep. Two outs in the inning, two on, and Tommy Ambrosino coming to the plate. For Ben McKenzie. McKenzie was hit by a pitch his last time up. You wonder if uh, he's okay. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that kid. That one down low. Called strike, 0-1. Now if Tommy can get the ball on the infield grass, he's a threat to beat it out. The 0-1 pitch. There's strike two. Tommy Ambersoni, a 217 average on the season. Coach Simos is going to look to him a lot next year. He really, really likes his attitude and his tools that he has. That one upstairs, one and two. Steve Simos on deck. 
Jamersoni's able to reach. I mean, the right fielder is playing like uh, Tommy is Kyle Yastrzemski as far as a pull hitter. It's a piece of this one, could be trouble, and that is gonna drop in for a hit. Here comes a run for the Hillers, it's 9-7, an RBI single for Ambrosoni. Anthony Siracco comes around to score. Connor Hebert moves up to second. Steve Simos to the plate. Maybe he can hit the ball one foot farther in this at bat today. This is the fourth inning of the game and the fourth time Steve Simos has stepped into the batter's box. Now I'm certain he had a grand slam the last at bat. And it was called a ground rule double. Certainly have to take a look at the video on that. And that's fouled away. One, one indication for me is the outfielder did not put his hands up. Right. I, I thought it was over. I thought it bounced after it went over the fence. At least that's what I saw from my perspective. And that's what the second base umpire saw. Signaling the home run and then changing his mind. I was excited it was going to be the uh, first grand slam we've seen this season. Ball one. Zach Sasitsky do up next if Steve Simos is able to reach. That looked like a tempting pitch for Stevie to hammer, but he laid off. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to bring you Hillers baseball. Matt Clark, our cameraman. It's been a wild one, a 9-7 lead for the Hillers here in the bottom of the fourth. There's a called strike, one and two. Well, Stevie couldn't have got that pitch with a nine iron, so he let that one go by. Takes a look at second and deals. And that hit him. Third time today, Steve Simos has been hit by a pitch. That has to be some kind of record. Zach Sasitsky will step in. <laughs> Unbelievable. We could make a whole movie oh, on Oh, they're sending him back. I don't know if they're going to give it to him. He didn't uh, make an attempt to get out of the way. I guess that's what the call is. Well. It was right at him, so I disagree with that. They're calling it a ball. Two and two. Steve Simo still in there. <laughs> The umpire has the full 1-1 one, one on him. Gets a piece of this one, ripped down the right side line, and that's going to get by. Here comes a run for the Hillers. It is 10-7, and the lead runner after that will be stopped at third, Ambrosino, but coming around to score is Hebert. A lot of worms killed on that base hit. That was smashed. And I didn't see if the first baseman was anywhere near it, but... Because our view is kind of blocked, but an RBI single for Steve Simos. You didn't see an error on that play, did you? No. <laughs> I'll bring up Zach Sasitsky. Hillers will take it 10 to 7. Good piece of hitting there by Simos. And Sasitsky steps in. Nobody in the middle guarding second base for Dova Sherborne. Stevie blessed with great speed. And Almy, not much of a move. Two on, two outs. Simos taking off from first, easy steal to second. So that's what happens if you don't have a good move and you're not protecting the middle. You get a base, base swiped on you. 1-0 count on Sasitsky. Can nice base hit, will score two here. Can the Hillers bat around three innings in a row? That one outside. 2-0. Oh. Sasitsky reaches. Anthony Farina will come up next. Followed by Matt Lindquist if Farina is able to reach. And that would be another bat around for the Hillers. Fisted foul. 2-1. and one. Right off the end of his bat. No warm-up action for Dover Sherborne. They're going to ride it out, it looks like, with Chase Almy. 
least for the moment. Got a nice pitcher's name though, doesn't he? Chase Almy. He does. Checking at third, runner slides back safe. You rarely see that. Pickoff move to third base. Tommy Ambrosino and Steve Simos able to come through with RBI base hits. To add two more runs for the Hillers to make it a 10-7 game. There's a strike, two and two. Zach looked like he wanted to pull the trigger on that pitch. He looked that ball all the way into the mitt. Decided not to offer. 2-2 two -two pitch. That's fouled into the backstop. This game approaching two hours. Really? It's been a long one. 17 runs between the two teams. And this is hit in the air, and it is foul just in front of the Dover Sherborne softball team. Fortunately, no one got hit. They're walking down the walkway behind us. They made no attempt to get that foul ball. That wasn't a very nice greeting from Zach Sasitsky. <laughs> wow. I mean, the right fielder is playing Zach uh, like he's Babe Ruth out there. Four steps to the fence. And that's foul into the Dover Sherborne dugout. Count remains two and two. If this game keeps going at this pace, you might have to start worrying about daylight soon. Mm hmm. Well, it is a very nice sun today, Tom, I must say. It certainly is. Sasitsky pops this one up. The second baseman going to range over and make the catch for the third and final out of the fourth. The Hillers do plate two more runs. It's a 10 to seven game as we head to the top of the fifth on H cam. Top of the fifth inning, Anthony Sirocco out there for his second inning of work. A 10 to seven lead for the Hillers. This has been an absolute wild one, Larry. Well, it wasn't a disaster like the girls softball game down at the lower field where they destroyed the Dover Sherborne Raiders 15 to three in a mercy game. Ah. So they got done early. Hiller softball continuing to roll right on. Ball one to Nick Markin, the left fielder. He's one for two, did reach on an error in the third. He scored two runs. Swing strike, one and one. Nice fastball by Andrew Scirocco. Well, Scirocco had a bit of a rough inning last inning. Ended up giving up four runs. Only three were earned as Markin gets a piece of this and lifts it into left field. That'll drop in for a hit. Lead off single here in the top of the fifth and that'll bring up Holden Ferrari. He'll be a threat to steal. I think he grabbed a base the last time he was on. Is that a true story, Tom? He swiped a bag? Uh, he might have. I don't have it written down, well, so I'd probably not. Okay. He did have an RBI single his last time up in the last inning. He's struck out twice besides that. And you wonder what the leash is going to be here with Sirocco after he had a very rough inning last inning. Oh, I don't see any warm-up action for the Hillers as of right now. Oh, I do. It's Pagliuca ah. with his... Crazy little knuckle curve. That one's up high. That'll get by Rankatori and an easy advance for Markin on the wild pitch. 1 0 on Ferrari. Well, tying run on deck for Dover Sherborne. Coach Simos is really earning his money today. First and third in on the corners. Right up in the pitch, a sliced foul, one and one. A win here today would uh, 
clinch a playoff spot for the Hillers. Actually, I think they would need one more since one of their wins was an unofficial game. So I think they would need one more TVL win. Which they can do Wednesday against Ashland or wait till Bellingham strolls into town. Yep. They do have a couple games on the road coming up as that pitch is inside, two and one. Almost hit him. Two Mark one pitch. There's a strike. Markins being a little pest out there at second base, getting a big lead, hoping for a ball in the dirt so he can advance. The 2-2. Two -two. Rip foul. After today, the Hillers are at Ashland. They then also play on Wednesday at Westwood. They're on a Thursday at Westwood. Wednesday's at Ashland. That's one of the uh, bottom clubs in the TVL, is that right? Yep. And then Tuesday the 22nd at Holliston. There appears to be a night game for the Hillers. And then you got the Pajoli tournament at Natick. You gonna be able to do that Holliston game since you're uh, a little yeah. scared of the dark there? We'll have to take a look at the schedule on that one. Full count pitch. And that is up the third base side. That is going to get past the dive of Lindquist, and everybody's going to be safe. Oh and boy. now on a misfire, that's going to allow Ferrari to advance to second. I think uh, Coach Syme also have a little discussion about that play, missing the cutoff man, missing two men, letting Chirac go. Well, two on, two in scoring position, no outs. John Musgrave to the plate. Zoranko still in the game. I think Coach Simon's really trying to reserve the bullpen, but sooner or later he's going to have to make a move, I think. As that one's fouled away, 0-1. Markham being very aggressive down a third, walking down the line while Andrews in the middle of his motion, hopefully waiting for a ball in the dirt. Line up in the pitch. Down low, nice play behind the plate by Rankatori. The 1-1. One, one. And this is chopped down the third baseline and bobbled, but he's able to pick it up to at least hold the runner from second from advancing. A run does score for Dover Sherborne. Nick Markin around. An RBI for John Musgrave. Give him a hit on that one. And that'll bring up Jake Skura, the second baseman. If Andrew had been pitching from the stretch, he might have been able to keep marking a little bit closer, but he was pitching out of the full windup, so he had uh, free reign to run down the baseline. A 10 to eight ball game. Still no outs for Dover Sherborne as that one's fouled into the backstop all in one. Cole Condon on deck for DS. Well, you know what they say, there's no clock in baseball, Larry. Who said that? <laughs> Thomas Edison? The 0-1. That hit him, base is loaded. Whatever mind Coach Simos has, I think he's uh, losing it very quickly. I think, I can't believe Sirocco's still out there. Cole Condon's gonna step in. Well, there's been a few errors behind him that haven't helped. Usually he's been right on. Been very dependable. That one outside, one and oh. Yank that pitch. Maybe he's overthrown a little bit, trying to bear down, bases are loaded. That's followed into the backstop, one and one. Bases loaded for Dover Sherborne, no outs, a run already in. 10 to eight, Hiller's leading, but 
Diaz closing in once again. Coach Simos waved his hat down to the bullpen. And this ball is crushed over to center field and it is dropped by the center fielder. One run is in and the runner behind him will be held up a 10 to nine game. Is that McKenzie who dropped that one? Ambrosino. Oh, Ambrosino who took over for McKenzie. I wonder if uh, McKenzie's injured because he came out of the game at a pretty interesting time. I think Tommy had to fight the sun off there. Yeah, the sun certainly had a factor. I got to give that an error, though. There's a bright orb right behind you, which we've been looking right at Tommy. Yep, that'll be it for Andrew Sirocco. He goes one plus innings with a uh, whole lot of struggles. Ended up giving up six runs. Certainly not all of them were earned. It appears only four of them were earned. And we'll get you some details on the new pitcher coming in after a quick break. It's Hillers 10, Dover Sherborne 9 on HCAM. New pitcher for the Hillers, it's Bob Pagliuca taking over for Anthony Sirocco. Sirocco went one plus innings, giving up six runs, four earned. Hit two batters. It's a 10 to nine lead for the Hillers, but bases loaded for Dover Sherborne, no outs as Wright follows this one off, 0-1. Pags features a fastball and uh, this knuckle curve he created, or has been working on for the last couple of years. Robbie Paglialuca, that's a lot of vowels there. Pat Wright is two for two, he was also hit by a pitch. That is a ball, an RBI for Pat Wright as well. Rancatori has to be really on his toes with that knuckle curve. What do you think behind him is going to score a run? Bob Pagliuca's third appearance on the mound, 467 ERA. That one down low. He has pitched three innings, giving up two runs, which were both earned. He's only faced 13 batters this season. He's a lot of fun in the dugout, according to his teammates. There's a strike. Two and two on right. He's not afraid to go to that Dr. Funk pitch with two strikes. And this one's on the ground. That's going to get through in a left field. The game is now tied, and now the leading run's going to come around. A two RBI base hit for Pat Wright as John Musgrave and Jake Scarra score and it's an 11 to 10 lead for Dover Sherborne. What a comeback by the Blue Raiders. And that'll bring up Trevor Bowman, the DH. You expect to come down and watch a baseball game and you got a football game instead. Right. Football game broke out. Trevor Bowman fouls this one away, 0-1. Two runners on, Cole Condon at second, Pat Wright at first. This game has been something else. Hillers had a five run bottom of the second and at the time led it five to nothing. And then Dover Sherborne responded in the third with three of their own. It was a five three game at that point as this one's hit high in the air to shallow center field and it is caught. No infield fly called on that. That is the first out of the inning, and that'll bring up Chase Almy. So after uh, three innings, it was an 8-3 lead because the Hillers scored three more on the bottom of the third. And then in the fourth, Dover Sherborne, four runs of their own. At the time, that made it 8-7. And then Hillers plated two runs in the bottom of the inning. As that one's fouled away, 0-1. Got some warm-up activity down the Dover Sherburn bullpen. Yeah. Now here in the fifth inning, uh, Dover Sherburn has played four more runs and now leads at 11 to 10. And at this point, they might be going for the win now. Right back into the game. As this is hit high in the air, right side foul territory. Sasitsky makes the catch. Two outs. 
That's going to bring up Matt McGrath, who came into the game for Graham Campbell. Take over on right field. Graham Campbell warming up the DS pitcher down in the bullpen. The infielder's got to knock down any ground ball, nothing through. Pagliuca deals a strike. I don't know, ball, excuse me. 1 0. Takes a look at second and delivers inside, 2 0. Two on for Dover Sherborne, two outs. Pagli Luca in command out there. There's a strike, two and one. <laughs> two one pitch, inside, chin music, three and one. McGrath reaches, Nick Markin do up next. AKA the pest. Yep. There's a strike, full count. I think Pags will throw the fastball here and McGrath will be sitting on the fastball. There's strike three, got him looking. That'll wrap up the top of the fifth, but not before Dover Sherborne plates four more runs, and the DS Raiders have taken the lead 11 to 10 as we head to the bottom of the fifth on H cam. Bottom of the fifth inning, four, five, and six do up for the Hillers. Anthony Farina, Matt Lindquist, and Anthony Sirocco do up in the order. That pitch up high, Chase Almy out there for his third inning of work. Eleven ten lead for Dover Sherborne. Wind up and the pitch. And he gets a piece of this one to center field it goes. And that'll drop in for a base hit. A leadoff hit for Farina. A little blood on that ball. For the last ten years I've wanted to know where he got that nickname Curly. I was just informed he was a very curly haired baby when he was younger. Ah. That solves the mystery. There you go. Matt Lindquist steps in, he's 0 for 3 today. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Did hit one fairly deep, but was caught earlier in the game. Out on the warning track. Looks like James Worth is warming up for Dover Sherborne. That pitch up high, 1 and 1. Blue Raiders trying to pull off quite the upset here today. It would save them from uh, elimination from playoff contention if they are able to get the win as this one's popped up and caught by the first baseman. Foul ball. Oh no, he dropped it. That's a bad drop, one and two. That could be just what the Hillers need. A little extra life. That's a catch you gotta make. He came all the way back, he got the lead. Gotta get these outs. Kid's got his Oakleys on, he's from Dover Sherburn. Not Foster Grants for sure. The one, two, that's fouled away. Matt, a little bit antsy in that batter's box. Doesn't wanna do too much here, just put it out there. Nobody can get it. Looks like Bob Pagliuca will hit next. Runner taking off from first and he will have the stolen base. Farina showing off the wheels, two and two. A speed burner out there for Curly Farina. I think Coach Simo saw his earlier pickoff move and this one's ripped down the third base line off of right and that'll get into left field. Farina over at third base. And that is going to be a single for Lindquist. Runners on the corners. 
I'll bring up Bob Pagliuca to the plate. Question is, is whether Coach Simos is going to send Matt Lindquist. He's got an easy swipe if he, if he goes on a curveball. Dova Sherburn, first baseman, was holding him on. Oh, I'm sure if uh, Chase Elmy has trouble here, that might be it for him. And he rips this to left field. That'll drop in for a base hit. Here comes the tying run, and it's an 11 to 11 game. An RBI single for Bob Pagliuca. And Lindquist up to second. And the fun continues on here at Hopkinton High School as Jack Whaley will come up to the plate. Still no outs here in the bottom of the fifth for the Hillers. He's a fan favorite, that Robbie Pagliuca, at least from his teammates' point of view. Line up and the pitch. Upstairs. This certainly wins wildest game of the year so far, Larry. Well, 11s are wild. Elmy set to deal. And that is sliced foul, one and one. Jack Whaley has walked twice, scored two runs, grounded out. He didn't get hit? He did not. Oh. Matt can get a very big secondary lead there. And there's a strike, one and two. Whaley not happy with that uh, call. I wonder what the leash is with Whaley. This is 30. You mean Almy? For, yeah, excuse me, Almy. It's third inning of work. Checking at second, runner back safe. It's a dangerous pickoff attempt. Almy has done a nice job at getting out of some of these jams, though. An 11 to 11 game, two on for the Hillers, no outs. And there's strike three on Whaley, one away. He's really unhappy with himself on that. That might have been a 55 mile an hour curveball. Connor Hebert steps in. Hebert is one for two with a walk and two RBIs. Connor's just got to meet the ball here. Doesn't have to slug it out of the park. It's a piece hit high in the air over to left field. The left fielder really has to range in, but will make the catch. Nice job by Nick Markin, two away. Runners stay at first and second. That'll bring up Tim Burdick. I think Timmy ought to take a pitch here. See what Almy's got. Wind up in the pitch. Up third base side, foul. There goes my theory about taking a pitch. Out in front of that one. Oh, you're certainly getting your money's worth today, Larry. Oh, a lot of money. <laughs> Lots and lots of money. This game, I think, will definitely exceed the three-hour mark. The 0 one pitch. Upstairs, runners taking off. The throw to third, not in time. The double Hillers steal. execute the double steal. Yeah. A one and one count on Burdick. Two outs, two runners in scoring position. An 11 to 11 game. See it, hit it, Timmy. There it is, gets a piece of this over to center field and it is caught. That'll wrap up the fifth inning. We will head to the sixth. It's Dover Sherborne 11, Hopkinton 11. It's Hillers baseball on H cam. Top of the sixth inning, it's Hopkinton 11, Dover Sherborne 11 on H cam. Two up for the Blue Raiders, it's Nick Markin, Holden Ferrari, and John Musgrave to face Bob Pagliuca. 
He's out there for his second inning of work. Did a pretty decent job coming in to relieve Anthony Farina. He also had a nice hit last inning for the Hillers, which was able to score Anthony Farina to tie the game up. Here's warm-up activity in the Hiller bullpen. A right-hander could be Cole Glassburn, could be Ty Doherty. That pitch is inside, 1-0. Oh. Keep a mark him off the bases. Eliminate the steal. That one outside, 2-0. I'm sure the Hillers trying to save as many of their pitchers as they can with a couple more games this week. That one's fouled away. Two and one. Maybe they would throw Tommy Leone for an inning if they needed him. I think they're saving him for Ashland. Line up in the pitch, fouled away. You don't think uh, Zach Sosiski will go on Wednesday? Eric, yeah, but you got a game Thursday as well, so I think you uh, rather have Leone start a game. Who knows with the way this game's going, we could be heading to extras. If this keeps up. A 2-2. Two -two. That one down low, full count. What's his average on the year, Markin? I don't mean to quiz you in the middle of an at-bat. Full count pitch. Fouled away. Squibbed. 231 heading in to this game. Looks like a 400 hitter today. With all the havoc he's causing. He's two for two. Also reached on an error. He scored three runs. And he puts this one up the middle, and that is going to get through. No. The throw over, not in time, and that is a single for Markin. He is having himself a day. I'll bring up Holden Ferrari, the center fielder. No outs in the inning, one on for Dover Sherborne. Coach Simos is definitely worried about Nick Markin over at first base. The big lead he's going to get right now. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Nice job of framing that pitch by Drew Rancatori. Pagliuca has to be very careful. Good step off the back of the rubber here. Pagliuca deals, and that hit the batter. When you throw funk, those kinds of things happen. First and second, no outs. Now bring up John Musgrave. You gotta be heads up on the bunt. Corner's gonna be in at least at first base, and Pagliuca has got to field his position and he bumped down the third baseline. There's a strike. Well, both of these bullpens have been working hard here today. None of these teams want to give in. The 0-1, fouled away 0-2. The Hillers have shown their hand on defense. Yeah, Lindquist is going to cover third base. The 0 2. Foul. Corner infielders back with two strikes. Not expecting a bunt. Oh, you never know in high school ball, anything can happen. Very true. <laughs> I 
Line up in the pitch. And this one's hit in the air over to center field and it is caught. One away. Nice range there by Ambrosino to get over. That ball was tailing away from him. So he got a good jump. Lost the hat too, trying to chase it down. A nice out for the Hillers. That'll bring up Jake Skura as Drew Rankatori will have a meeting on the mound with Bob Pagliuca. Fortunately, there's no meetings rules in high school baseball, unlike the six meetings in Major League Baseball. Pagliuca set to deal. Checking at second and nearly got him, but runner back safe. That'll keep Markham a little bit closer. Line up and the pitch, swinging strike. Markham got a very good secondary lead out there and put the, put the brakes on, on that swing and miss. Pagliuca set to deal. Gets a piece of this one, right side. Sasitsky chasing it down, and no one's gonna get there, 0-2. I would have let that one drop foul if anybody got close. Markham would have tagged easily. A lot of kids waiting for supper. I know I am. <laughs> well, big brothers out there playing ball. On the ground, up the middle, gloved at short, steps on second for one, the throw to first, and that is in time. A six to three double play retires the side in the top half of the six. We will head to the bottom of the inning. It's the Hillers 11, Dober Sherborne 11 on H cam. Bottom of the sixth inning, Ben McKenzie back into the lineup to step in for Tommy Ambrosino. He'll face John Musgrave, the fourth Dover Sherborne pitcher of the game. And Musgrave is set to deliver. We'll get you the stats on him in just a moment. As McKenzie gets a piece of this one over to right field, it goes and it's caught by the second baseman. What a job by Skura getting over to make the play there, and that'll bring up Steve Simos. Ben not happy with himself swinging at that first pitch. John Musgrave, one win, two losses, a 427 ERA, has started four games. This is his sixth appearance on the mound. So Dover Sherborne really digging deep into the bullpen here, pretty much bringing out a starter. There's a 50-50 chance Stevie gets hit. He's worked 21 and a third, is that pitch outside? That's what Vegas says. Yeah. Simos got hit last time up, but they called it a uh, ball instead because they said he didn't get out of the way as he follows that one over our heads, one and one. He ended up hitting a scorching ball down the right field line. A one one pitch, that's followed into the backstop. One and two. An 11 11 ball game. It was the first inning that Dover Sherborne didn't play to run since the second. Musgrave's a little sneaky with his fastball. Good time called here by Simos. I think Stevie's expecting fastball here. The one, two, and he gets a piece of this foul. Lefty will step back in. Sometimes you can tell whether there's going to be a fastball or curveball depending on how much time the pitcher is fiddling in his glove. 
And he'll put this up the left side. That'll drop in for a hit, a one-out single for Simos. And that'll bring up Zach Sasitsky. Game leading run on base for the Hillers. Sasitsky has yet to get a, actually did get a hit in the third. Takes a strike there. Oh no, he was hit by a pitch in the third, so he actually has not gotten a hit this game. He reached on a force out, walked, was hit by a pitch and flown out. That's the kind of game it's been. <laughs> How many times through the order have we been? This is Zik Sasitsky's fifth time at the plate. That one outside, one and one. Zach, a little surprised at that breaking pitch. Sitting on a fastball, obviously. Coach Simos might have a play on here with Stevie. Blessed with good speeds. Checking at first, Simos back safely. Maybe the Dover Sherbin coach sniffed that one out. Another check in. And that's fouled away. Runner takes off. He'll have to return. Watch for Musgrave to pick over a couple times since Stevie took off. Coach Simos desperately needs a man in scoring position. One two pitch. And he gets a piece of this hit in the air over to left field, battling the sun and making the catch is Nick Markin. Simos will stay at first. Two away, and that'll bring up Anthony Farina. Be nice to see this future friar hit a bomb here. You know, Stevie Simos is looking at that pitcher's back foot for any indication of a pickoff move. Checking at first, runner back safe. Read that one beautifully. Just got to zone in on that back foot. If that moves, pitcher's going to go over. Line up and the pitch. Fouled away. 0 oh and 1 on Farina. Anthony Farina is 1 for 3 today with a walk, an RBI, a single, and a stolen base. Anthony wanted to hit the Brown Gym with that swing. Stevie's really bothering Markham or Musgrave over there at first base. Runner taking off from first as this one's fouled away. He'll have to go back. 0 oh 2. Well, this game has had a bit of everything in it. I think Coach Simos is going to cut his son loose here. Two strikes. He's taking off. And that's strike three. Won't matter. That'll end the bottom of the six. We head to the seventh. We are tied at 11 on each can. Top of the seventh inning, an 11-11 game between the Hillers and Dover Sherborne. Four, five, and six to up. Cole Condon, Pat Wright, Trevor Bowman for the Blue Raiders. Bob Pagliuca out there for his second inning of work. We had a good inning last inning, giving up no runs. It was the first inning, and since the second, the Hillers were able to do that. Game must be three and a half hours old. Oh, and one. Almost three hours. 
feels like three and a half, Tom. Certainly does. A lot of twists and turns in this one. Ben McKenzie is back out in center field. So the corner outfielders and the second baseman and shortstop have to go out and get the ball should he catch it. That one down low, one and one. Well, Dover Sherborne, they brought a starter into the game last inning. To, they're really trying to win this game now. John Musgrave out there. See a good opportunity to pull off the upset here today. That hit the batter. Lead runner on for Dover Sherborne. Here comes Pat Wright, the third baseman. Dover Sherborne coach is going to talk to him, see if he wants to put down a bunt, put on a play. Well, you wonder what Coach Simus will do here. We'll just ride it out with Bob Pagliuca. Looks like Ben McKenzie is shading his eyes from a very fierce sun. It's right in his eyes. Pat Wright having a good day at the plate. Three for three. He was also hit by a pitch. Three RBIs. He puts down the bunt. That's fair. And it is going to be one out. Did his job. Condon up to second. Two to three for Wright. And that'll bring up Trevor Bowman. I don't know why. I don't know if that was the right call though with a hitter that is three for three on the day. All they need is one run. Yeah, they do have a runner in scoring position. Fastball down low. Line up and the pitch. And this is crushed over to right field and caught. Two away. And we'll bring up Chase. Well, actually, it's Chase Elmy's part of the order, but they're going to have a pinch hitter. It's going to be Kirby Ryan stepping in. Nice job fielding by Anthony with the ball tailing away from him towards the right field line. Um, Pagli Luca has first base open, so he doesn't have to be right down the middle. Can make this hitter hit his pitch. That one up high, one and all. Oh. <laughs> Coach Simon's reminding Drew that there is an open base, so nothing down the fat part of the plate. pitch on the ground up the middle gloved at short throw to first and got him six to three goes Almy and that will retire the top of the seventh to the bottom of the inning we go it's 11 to 11 on H cam bottom of the seventh inning Dover Sherborne 11 Hopkinton 11 five six and seven do up for the Hillers Matt Lindquist stepping in to face John Musgrave, who's out there for his second inning of work. It's blazing fastball, 0-1. Infield playing really, really deep. They're giving up a little one hopper or something. We have time called. Outfield is playing no doubles. Nothing's going to get through there. Keep the ball in front of him. The 0-1 pitch, fouled away, 0-2. Bob Pagliuca do up next. He had the RBI single in the fifth to tie it. If Musgrave has a breaking pitch, now's the time to throw it. Gets a piece of this, driven into left field. That'll drop in for a base hit. It's a leadoff single for Matt Lindquist. They may pinch run for him. I don't know. That'll bring, nope. 
We're going to Bob Pagliuca, the winning run on base for the Hillers. He does have Cole Glassburn on the bench who can run. Hey, if they're able to walk off with this one, I believe that'll be their fourth home walk off of the year. Four out of the last five. I guess that's how they have to win this season, walk off fashion. <laughs> Runner back safely. He went back in there like a seal. Check in now, he'll slide back once again. He shouldn't be that close if he keeps his eye on the pitcher. Bunt here and a slow roller picked up, throw to first, they get one. Pags does his job. And one to three there and that'll bring up Jack Whaley. I don't know whether Coach Simos is gonna put a speed guy out on second base. Apparently not. Musgrave set for the pitch. They're leading off of second, breaking pitch in there for a strike. Whaley wants to get back at a DS pitcher after his last at bat. He got caught looking on a curveball. It's a piece of this, takes a hop. That's a fair ball, gloved by the second baseman, throw to first, they get the out. Runner does advance to third, but there's two outs. Winning run 90 feet away. Connor Hebert will step in. Tough play for the second baseman there on that ball beaten down in the ground. There's a strike. Okay, now he's had a chance to see Markham. Gage is fastball. Musgrave steps off the back of the rubber. Wines and deals upstairs. Overthrew that one a little bit. Third baseman is not covering Matt Lindquist. Musgrave pitching out the stretch so he can sneak a little bit further down the third baseline. Set to deliver. It's a piece of this. In the left field it goes and the Hillers are gonna walk off with the 12 to 11 victory. Connor Hebert gets the job done. An RBI single to drive in Matt Lindquist. And after about three hours, the game finally comes to a close. And it comes to a close with a Hillers walk-off victory. What a back and forth battle by the Hopkinton Hillers here today against the Dover Sherborne Blue Raiders. A 12 to 11 walk-off victory for the Hillers. We're gonna come back, wrap this game up, and we'll have the senior night festivities. You are tuned in to Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Hopkinton Hillers Baseball set to do the senior night festivities. Uh, Hopkinton Hillers take down Dover Sherborne today, 12 to 11, a very, very wild game. The action started out in the bottom of the second when the Hillers played at five runs. It was a five to nothing lead heading in to the third inning. Dover Sherborne would plate three runs in the top of the third, then the bottom of the third, Hillers plate three more to make it eight to three. And then four runs in the fourth for Dover Sherborne. The Hillers respond with two of their own. It was a 10 to seven game at that time. And Dover Sherborne would end up taking a lead in the fifth inning with four runs. And they ended up making it an 11 to 10 game. The Hillers tied it up in the bottom of the fifth with an RBI single from Bob Pagliuca. And then ended up with the walk-off win 
as Connor Hebert was able to drive in Matt Lindquist in the bottom of the seventh to give the Hillers the walk-off victory, a 12 to 11 score. Quite a game. Bob Pagliuca ends up being the winning pitcher. John Musgrave the loss. Hillers 12 runs, 11 hits, five errors. Dover Sherborne 11 runs, 13 hits, three errors. As right now you are getting a glimpse at the senior night festivities for the Hopkinton Hillers. They are now 10 and four on the season. They still technically have to win one more TVL game to clinch a playoff spot. As you will see the seniors present their parents with some flowers as part of the senior night festivities. The Hillers next battle Ashland on the road at Ashland High School will be there for that game as well. And they have a couple of big ones to close out the season. They need one more official win to get into the postseason. That is certainly expected to happen with the amount of great talent on this team. And we'll keep on showing you the senior night festivities for the Hopkinton Hillers. Well, it's sometimes you have these wild games where you come in, you get the bats going, you're expecting to win, but sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. You gotta battle through some Rough pitching and defensive mistakes, and the Hillers, they were able to do that today. like to introduce Wolf. Come on, Wolf. Oh. <laughs> hey, Wolf. Hey, Wolf. Wolf is from the Dominican, oh. and he's new to our school. Oh. 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 You're winning in the javelin, right? Yeah. And you're walking on my new grass I saw during the game. <laughs> uh, again, I want to thank everybody. Um, I really, really appreciate all the effort you've given this year. I know it's a kind of a, it's been a weird year, um, but it's been a great year. All right, so thank everybody, and uh, we're going. Should I say anything about Yogurt Beach? What do we do? Yeah. Just go right there, or? Yeah.
Well, there you have it, the senior night festivities for Hopkinton Hillers baseball. Once again, they pull off the 12 to 11 victory over the Dover Sherborne Blue Raiders. The Hillers are now 10 and four on the season. For Matt Clark on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for joining us for this production of Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and we'll talk to you again soon.